C.G. Young said that called or uncalled, the gods are present. And he had that carved in Latin over his office door. And it refers to the nature of archetype and how it is present throughout our world, uh, present in us, um, part of the way in which uh, form comes into matter in the world. And I believe that archetype permeates all of reality, uh, that it forms uh, our human psyche and our human nature because it forms nature. It's one of the ways that the mystery of form coming into matter can be understood. In the Western world, we've come to think of consciousness as uh, the only, um, the conscious mind as the only form of consciousness. But Jung observed uh, the presence of the unconscious and spoke of the unconscious as the matrix out of which consciousness bloomed. And we can think of archetypes as structural forms of the unconscious. So these are the gods, the energies, the uh, hubs of energy that give form to the unconscious psyche and from the unconscious psyche uh, give form to our experience and our reactions. Archetypes are universal. They're an inner psychological structure shared by all people. And they transcend our personal history, our culture, and our time. So the Greeks were dealing with the same archetypes that we're dealing with today and that future generations will be dealing with. You can understand archetype as like psychological gravity. It pulls our responses to experience in distinct directions. So one person having an affiliation with one particular archetype, they respond one way. Someone else having a different orientation, a different archetypal affiliation, their response goes another way. And you can think of there being thousands of archetypes. Certainly every mythological and folk motif, fairy tale motif can be thought of as an archetype. But there are some that are more primary. And that's a lot of what Jung observed was the most primary archetypes. One of these being the shadow, of course, the unredeemed quality in us. All of us have so much that is missing from our awareness. And that is the shadow consciousness that we often project onto other people or onto aspects of ourselves. It can be an inner voice as well. There's a lot we could say about that. This is Marlon Brando and Eva Marie Saint. And you can think of the two of them as examples of the anima or animus woman, the person that holds the image for our inner opposite sex figure. So when we have the experience of love at first sight, we're projecting our inner um, figure onto this other person. And ultimately that figure has to be reintegrated into ourselves and it's our inner soul guide. And the more we can work with it, the better it will be. But we experience most often in these kind of outer images. This is from On the Waterfront. Another archetype that's primary is the self and Jung talked about the self being the part of us that contains both the conscious and the unconscious, the human and the natural world, the whole being. And it leads us into greater wholeness and it leads us out of imbalance. If we're imbalanced in favor of one way of being, it will lead us into the other way for, for greater um, homeostasis or balance. Now, Tony Wolf observed a pair of binary um, polar opposite archetypes in the psyche that she believed to be very primary as well and gave a lecture in 1934 on those archetypes and that's the basis of archetypal nature. There's Tony and Emma, CG and Sigmund Freud in 1911. And there's the basis of her system and that she posited that there's an inherent binary tension in nature between our orientation to the collective and to the individual between application and understanding. And that's what we get into in archetypal nature. We're not going to get into that right now. And your archetype is your way of being. So each of those archetypes that you saw there, that can be the energy behind what you do and love and want. It's your deepest values and where they come from. It's what makes you tick and your modus operandi.
It's the way that your energy flows down a certain direction, your libido, uh, your psychic energy flows a certain way and not another way. Your archetype is the general form of your deepest passion, what lights you up, what you become transcendent through doing it, what takes you away and you lose time and space through your involvement with it, when you really lose yourself through a certain activity or way of being, that's, uh, that's your archetype. Now, these archetypes can be understood as the gods in our psyche. They have character and intent and drive. And our inner affiliations with them shape our desires and interests. However, these gods can also rule us. And we only gain a measure of power over them by becoming conscious of how they live in us. Your archetype suggests the repeated form of tragedy that you go through over and over in your life. And sometimes we can find ourselves, you know, making the same mistakes over and over again. An archetype very often has something to do with that. Certainly the unconscious in general does. Now, archetype leads us down the rabbit hole for good or ill into the compulsion of the shadow. And you can know that your connection to the archetype is unconscious, a shadow uh, connection when it is compulsive. That's a big clue. And you can change that by trying to become creative in your engagement with that archetype, trying to honor it through being consciously, creatively uh, in participation with it. Your archetype ultimately contains that great gold that you have to share with the world. And that's why it's so important to claim it and own it and honor it and recognize it and celebrate it in yourself. And I'm the uh, developer and facilitator of Archetypal Nature. And I'm very proud to share that work with you. And one of the ways that I illustrate it is through great film and TV and historic and pop culture and mythological examples. And that's where you can really see Archetype in, in these examples and really see it illustrated. Uh, you can understand how it's operating throughout your life and throughout your family's life. Thank you.